Hey guys, so here I'm going to show you the basics of working with Maya's camera. It's going to be like part one of two. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is some of the um, attributes and some of the uh, tools settings for camera use. And then we'll set up a couple cameras here and I'll show you how they work. This may be one of my longer videos, but I'll try to keep it as entertaining and um, flow as good as possible so you guys to actually pay attention and grab a hold of this. So this is a little CD scene. Uh, that little accent there sounded like it. Uh, there's a little city scene that I made uh, a while back, and I used a tool called Qtown, which is up in Creative Crash. The tool allows you to procedurally make generic models, and I modified and made some of my own, um, but this is for an, uh, a movie that I'm working on right now, an animated short. And I used some of it and textured some of my own stuff. So we're going to use this guy, and we're going to whore him out a little bit for our lecture here on online. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, we're going to use a camera in a couple different capacities and show you how they work. And we're going to play with them and move them around in the city and have the camera follow, play with the movement. <clears throat> and I may include that um, this city with other lectures and use it and because uh, I'll have a couple others that I'm going to make concerning camera usage and movement. All right. So first up, let's go ahead and make a uh, little generic camera real quick. So I'm going to go to Create. I'm going to cameras. I'm going to create a regular camera here. There we go. Just a regular one. Now, whenever you can't find them, just open up your outliner. And I isolated and made sure it went to objects, just cameras. And it'll just give us cameras. So I can grab this guy and I can scale them up. The nice thing about scaling up your camera is it's not going to affect anything else in your scene. So if I go scale up my camera, camera can be as big as you want it to be. You just got to be careful and watch out. Uh, and I like to keep it somewhat relative to the original scale of the actual camera so you can tell when things are clipping or not but basically to change the scale you're not going to mess up your ratio your ratio should stay the same so that's our regular camera so let's go and make another camera we're going to go to create and we'll go to cameras so I'm going to create a camera and aim he's going to show up at the same spot he's also going to be in a camera group which you do want to use if you need to scale them up you want to grab that camera group and scale them up. Don't scale it up individually. Things make it a little weird because this aim is still dependent on the camera and the camera is still dependent on the aim. They are brothers in arms. All right. And we'll do another one. We'll do create. We we'll go to cameras. I'm going to do a camera with aim it up. Now, the thing about this one, and one of my students was asking in class, like, what's the difference between these guys? This guy allows you to do like a pitch, a turn, a little bit of a yaw and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. These allow you to get a little more dynamic with your movement. What I mean by that is I can grab the top here and move it and you can get a nice little turning back and forth. Could even work well for like a roller coaster or any kind of moving object and the camera needs a track. So to keep those things in mind. Whenever you want to grab a group, just grab the actual base of the object, hit the up arrow, and that brings you to the whole group. So just, that's a quick way instead of having to open up the outliner every time to get that going. All right, if I'm going too fast, just let me know. <laughs> you can't because you're on YouTube. It's weird. All right, so what we're going to do here is we got our three cameras, and these are the main ones we're going to be working with. Uh, maybe later on we'll talk about stereoscopic cameras. Um, in certain viewers, it doesn't work, though. Stereoscopic does not work for DX11. That's why some of these buildings look red because I have DX11 shaders active. Now, I haven't updated my latest video on that, and I will eventually, and uh, you'll see the post in YouTube when that happens. All right, so we got our three cameras up. What we're going to do here real quick before we get into these guys, let's talk about cameras in general. We're going to use the perspective as our guinea pig. So first up, whenever you're working with a camera, you really don't want to work with your perspective. Back in the day in the early versions of Maya, you could use uh, perspective and you could actually see it. But now in the, um, the that was the early versions. Now in the new versions, you, you can't really see your camera anymore. It frustrated me when I found that out. And I'm animating. I'm like, where is it? So it kind of disc appears. Like you can grab it. And this is why it's kind of grayed. It is an actual physical object you can actually grab or see in 3D, which you can with these guys. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a generic one. We're gonna, we were going to pick on him, but just, just in case, um, if, if something hits me to show you something else, we're going to use a regular camera. Let me zoom him up. I'm going to keep my finger at the V key so I can keep things in context. I'm going to snap him to a corner like over here or something. And let's hit the R key to scale him up a little bit. And let's move him back a little bit. I think he's on the base there. There he goes. 
I'm back here. So now he's kind of looking directly at the city. So what we're going to do, let's actually look through his eyes. And to do so, we're going to go to perspective. And he's the latest camera, so we're going to go to camera four. There he is right there. Let me zoom out a little bit. And whenever you're starting out to work with your cameras and mess with your environments, what you want to do is figure out what your ratio is going to be and figure out where your cutoff area is going to be. Very important when it comes to working with cameras. So what I'm going to do is open up my render editors real quick. And I'm going to go in here and we're going to change our resolution. We're going to change our resolution to 1080. Now, right now it's at default because I've been working with 1080. But whenever you can, you want to try to choose 1080 or 720. Whenever you make these, choose these lower ones, especially what your target's going to be. Are you going for a cell phone? Are you going for um, a smaller screen? Is it just a preview of stuff? But most of the time I'll choose 1080, 720. Either one of those guys should work just fine. So now that we have that, we're going to go in here and go to view. And we're going to go in here and go to our uh, camera settings. And I'm going to turn on resolution gate. Now the cool thing about the resolution gate, this shows me exactly where things are going to be uh, cut off in my scene. So you ever render something, animate something, and realize that the hand of the character is outside the scene. Half his head's being cut off. And that's because you don't have your resolution gate to be able to monitor that. So you want to be able to turn that on. So camera settings, resolution gate. And you can turn off gate mask if you want to. That just turns off the masking on the outer part. But I like keeping that on because at least I can track things a little bit better. Um, I can get distracted easy, um, uh, which you probably saw from some of my lectures. Um, so you got to make sure uh, you, I like keeping that on. That helps me out a lot. So we got our camera set up here. We can look around. So let's look at some of the other options we have here. I'm not going to go through every single one of these options because it takes too long to do so, but we're going to focus mainly on what we're talking about. There's ignore 2D pan and zoom. This uh, allows you to actually uh, limit the movement of what your camera is picking up and how it's moving in your scene. Um, undoable movement. Now this one's actually kind of cool. Unfortunately it has its limitations. One of the limitations that it has is when you turn on undoable movement that allows you to actually like if you move your camera and you mess up and you're like oh crap you can hit control Z and it'll put your camera right back. Unfortunately you can hit control Z too many times and all of a sudden as you can see Maya down below says camera true right there. What it did was it turned off by undoable movement. So you can actually undo enough to turn off your undoable movement. So you got to be careful with that. So to, what I do is I don't really use this all the time. A lot of times what I'll use is bookmarks. And I just want to point that tool out to you because some of you guys might like it. So say I like this shot. We'll call this the amazing shot. We'll call this amaze balls shot. That's my new term now. I say amaze balls all the time. All right. So we'll go in here and hit enter. So you now have the amaze ball shot right there. So this right here, we have a nice shot. So if I move away, instead of using undoable movement, I can say, oh crap, go back to amaze ball shot right there. There we go. Cool. So you can bookmark a bunch of those. It can be a whole bunch of them all the way listed all the way down. And I use it all the time. So that can take the place of undoable movement. But again, it's up to you. But what you can do too, if you turn on undoable movement, you can go to Maya. Let's actually turn it off for a second and then I'll show you what I'm getting at. This is what I showed you guys in class for those that did take my class. Um, you can turn on your script editor. In your script editor what I'll do is I'll turn on commands, um, echo all commands, and uh, when you echo all your commands, actually under history my bad, when you echo all your commands what I can do is go in here and go to, and it's recording my movement of my mouse too which is kind of nice. Uh, really helpful when it comes to scripting or anything, not necessarily mouse movement, but what you can do is when I turn on my camera and I'll go to my camera settings and I'll say undoable movement, you can track where undoable movements is at. Now this is your undoable movement right here. This is really, really helpful. So if you wanted, you can grab that guy and you can middle mouse drag him. It's still recording my movement here, but you can middle mouse drag it to your custom shelf. So whenever it turns on or off, you can have that ready to go. Let me turn off echo all commands. Sometimes it's cool. As newer versions of Maya come up, though, it starts to track everything, like even more than it did before. And uh, sometimes you have to go through your code really meticulously to find out if you are using MailScript. Warning for those diving into that. All right. So again, you could middle mouse drag it, and then you can have your uh, turn on, turn off, um, undoable movement. So if you actually turn it off, you can turn it on again. So you middle mouse drag that code 
as it's active. You don't always have to echo, but um, for the most part, uh, that allows you to track what Maya is tracking of yours and to do any tweaks. All right, so you can turn off. There's film gate if you want to. It shows exactly how the size of your film is. If you looked at a, a piece of film and it's kind of clipped off there. Um, but I'm not going to go through all these. We're going to go back to resolution gate. And there's also no gate at all. So if you don't want nothing at all, you can turn that off. There's a field chart. So if I go under here again. And field chart, what this does, that gives you a marking area. So if you had a, if you needed to composite something, you needed to track exactly where they're going to be. It's almost like a paint by numbers kind of thing. If you had 2D overlay that you had for your scene, you could export this out, bring it into another package, and you could use this to your advantage. All right, so that one's actually cool looking, but not necessarily something that we're going to necessarily use. Now, the two that I do want to point out real quick before we wrap this up for this particular section is we want to look at safe action. Now, safe action is kind of a warning area. And it's the outline of your camera. And what this does is keeps you from bleeding outside of your um, resolution gate. So this is the area where everything is going to be primarily safe, where the focus area should be, where your object should be at. Another... Uh, type of uh, area that there is established there is your um, safe title sorry I have a little bit of a migraine so my thoughts are kind of coming in chunks there so safe title what this says this allows you say you have subtitles that you have on your in your piece um, this sh shows you an area where you can keep your title so you don't cut them off there's nothing worse than watching a movie and you'll see this when they convert 70s kung fu movies to like the format now there's nothing worse than getting that stuff cut off I'm a big kung fu fan and and you see you know what's happening you don't know that Kam Lao is going to be taking on Da Wu and he's like super powerful I just made up a few names I'm really horrible at other pronunciation um but you know your hero and you want to be able to see what's going on and that safe action area allows you to be able to uh, isolate that region and uh, you just got to be careful of that safe action and safe title so let's go and turn those guys off real quick There we go. And we'll turn off save title. You get the idea with those guys. And we'll wrap this section up real quick. There's film origin. You'll see like where the origin of uh, the center area of the camera is at. I didn't really go over this in class. There's also film pivot. This shows you the vectors, the horizontal and the vertical on your camera so you can track it a little bit better. Not always um, as uh, cool as it may seem. They don't help you out so much. if, um, But they can if you need an exact shot. You need your camera to track. So for tracking your camera, for um, compositing, these things are priceless. But if you're just going in here to get a roundabout shot, you, you know exactly where you're at, and you don't necessarily need to track anything specifically, then they may not be as necessary. Turn that off. So right now we have our camera set at, go back to our camera settings. We have our camera set at um, fill. You can do horizontal, and you'll see minimal changes between these. These basically allow you to control your uh, your positioning of your camera. So we're gonna go back to fill. So these, some of these are redundant. So we'll just keep this here. We won't go through each one of these. I said I wouldn't. I'm slowly starting to. Let's just stay to fill. I don't wanna lose you guys. And you start drooling on the keyboard. All right, so we got this whole thing set up here. And he's all good to go. We got our camera situated. We got our cutoff area, so we know where our resolution gate's at, which is really, really nice. But let's talk about some of the things in the control that you have for your camera in general. So we're using a generic camera still up front. And uh, let's go to camera tools. So there's a tumble tool. And you can see these underneath if you go to your general editor. You can see some of these. Not all of them, but some of them. And uh, let's go back there to camera tools. So we got the tumble tool. So let's play with the tumble tool here. So this allows you to distinctly use it without hitting alt. So I'm using this tumble tool, like basically like a rotate, but it's like kind of local to where the camera's pivots at or origin. We have the track tool again without using alt. We can use that. We also have the dolly tool. So again, without using alt, these things are active. Anytime you want to get out of them. All you need to do is just click on your toolbox and they turn off and you go back to your standard using alt middle mouse um, um, all the other keys and on the on the on the keyboard as well as the mouse button all right so we go back here we also have zoom I don't have to show you that there's a 2d pan zoom tool this allows you to 2d pan this moves it around 
basically literally can change your whole cutoff area. Um, I don't have undoable movement on this one. We can also go back to bookmark. And uh, we also have our uh, grease pencil, which we're not getting into yet, but we'll get into later on. This allows you to draw on your screen. We used to do this back in the day. We used to work for a company called Press Start, and we were working on Run Like Hell. We were actually um, drawing on our monitors to try to get the animation to work really cool. And I used to do that with my old big monitor, too. It actually helps out a lot. So roll tool. This allows you to roll. So if you had a, a scene where it's like on a ship, this actually can be kind of nice, or a character looking through his eyes as he's trying to balance, which is kind of nice, kind of cool. And we also have the um, azimuth elevation, elevation excuse me, tool. And um, what this does, this gives you a sense of like maybe it looks like a security camera kind of movement to it, but it also changes a little bit of the positioning and height of the object. It's almost like the pivot's in the center and the camera's moving around an object that's not really there. Okay, so it's kind of nice, but you got to be careful. If you play with this too much, you can throw up. Um, it is very disorienting. But again, the reason why Maya gives you these is so you can have more control. There's a yawn and pitch. So we got the yawn and pitch. It allows you to move around. And a lot of these, you can use them for distinct shots, like maybe somebody's inside of an airplane and looking off to the side. You can actually play with these to really get some cool effects. And finally, last but not least, we have the fly tool. Now the fly tool, this literally, as you mess with this guy, you can really get some cool type of movement, but again, it also can be very, um, you know, disorienting. So I can keep my fly tool active and I can use any of these others, and you can actually make it look like, you know, you're flying around as well as you're looking around. And you can control the speed of your mouse outside of Maya if you need to, if it goes too fast. It's a little bit jaunting on this. All right, so that's about it for the uh, camera tools here. And I'm going to turn this one off by hitting my regular controls. And there we go. We can go back and do our bookmarks too if we feel like we've lost our orientation. There we go. Cool. So what we're going to do now, we're going to actually grab two of these other guys. Let me switch to perspective because we don't really need to mess with that anymore and we're gonna uh, control these cameras I'm going to talk about the difference of them and how they work one of them we're just gonna make a uh, orb the orb of justice there he is he's invading the city he's not a very nice orb he's kind of a jerk he's from the planet jerk orb not from the planet of maze balls he's a this guy's a big jerk so we're going here and I'm gonna move him over here and we're gonna track his movement we're gonna do him. We're gonna use him on with one of the um, aim cameras. But for now, what we're gonna do? Let's do a fly through. He's on standby. He's in the wings in his in, in his little actor's chair. What we're gonna do is gonna make a spline curve, and we're gonna attach this camera to that spline curve. I'm gonna show you how that works. So let's go to our top-down view real quick. Big magnificent city of magnificentness. It's like the worst Sean Connery accent ever, right? So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to uh, make a spline curve. I'm just going to randomly put him between the city. And we did this in class. It was a little tricky because the one that I generated was really uh, kind of a tight city. But we can play with these a little bit. So we're going to mess with this a little bit here. And we're going to keyframe. Not only do we can we keyframe um, the camera after he's been attached to this curve, but we can also, um, not only um, his pivoting, but we can do up and down, we can literally grab the curve and edit it after the fact. And that's what we're going to do in a second. So let's modify center pivot. There we go. Not completely center, but it tries. <clears throat> I'm going to move it up a little bit in the air. Is it intersecting with the floor? Move it over here a little bit. I'm at the F key, fit him into view. So we're going to move him around. You can say this is like uh, the hero superfly dude here to check on New York City. That's kind of a shard, a shard, it's a new word I just made up. A hard angle, a shard angle. That's from a movie, I think, I'm not gonna quote that. Um, and we're gonna grab this here and move him up a little bit. And we're gonna change his elevation. Let's change his elevation a bit. Have a little bit of fun with this so it isn't so sterile, static. Getting a little close to that corner 
So let's move him in a little bit, make a little more organic there. Well, there's two of them. So we'll stretch that out a little bit. There we go. And you got to be careful sometimes with the hard angles when you are doing this because they don't read really well. The camera will make a sudden turn or shift and it'll be kind of odd and hard on the viewer. So that's when you have to make some secondary keys to control it. And we're not going to probably do all <clears throat> do all of our secondary keys because it's going to take too long. <clears throat> but I want you to get the, the gist of how this tool works. So with that selected, we're going to shift select our regular camera. And you want to label them as you go. We'll just call this a cam track. Cam, we'll just say motion track. TRK, there you go. And we're going to shift select the spline curve that we need. And what we're going to do is go to animate motion paths and we're going to attach to motion path. So what happens automatically is your camera all of a sudden becomes like a shotgun rider. And when you run the camera movement, it's only going to cover those corners right there. And let's go and scale him down a little bit. Let's make sure it's set to uh, real time. There we go. And you'll notice, so our time frame is really short. So if you ever do this, one reason I, I did this so I could show you this, if you ever added your camera and you're like, oh crap, I didn't want to do 48 frames, I want to do like 300 frames. Well, I can punch in 300 frames right here in my timeline, and the playback's gonna be set to 300. But when we click on the motion path, in other words, if we click on the line, or we click on the camera, there's a thing called motion path. He shows up on both areas because they're connected. If you click on it, you'll see your keyframes. And that's the only way you're going to see your keyframes. A lot of people, when they when they do this exercise in class, are like, where's my keyframes? Where? Well, you have to click on motion path for them to show up. But we want to extend it because that is really weak. Like, look how fast that is. That will always at the end. Like he's on crack or something or speed. So what we'll do is we're going to grab that last keyframe here and drag that all the way in. And how I did that, if you didn't watch my uh, game loop um, video, what you can do is you can shift, left click, and drag. And you can grab that keyframe and move it all the way down. And I'll just click away and then he's set in there. Another way you can do it is you can hit the greater than or less than keys. And you can middle mouse drag. And when you middle mouse drag, then you can hit the S key. And it will actually have that new key in there. See, much better, much better. But you'll notice it looks weird, right? He's off to the side. He's like a tourist. It doesn't look really great. And let's scale down the camera just a little bit more. So what we need to do, so we need to go in here and we need to fix that. So to fix that, what you'll do is you go to your uh, side twist and you can edit it here or you can go to your up twist, whatever you want. And up twist for the most part, in this particular case, um, you'll see that it works by pulling, pushing this guy, I mean, rotating this guy so you have him facing forward. There we go. Didn't even have to set a keyframe for it, just needed to rotate it a bit. So now it's going to track that area and go all the way through. See that? So again, to get there, I clicked on either the camera or the spline curve. Then in the channel box, I clicked on inputs motion path. And I messed with my, um, my little up twist here, and this allows me to, to isolate his movement. So let's look through that camera and see what it looks like. So it's probably going to be super fast. We're not going to counter keyframe any of it. And you can in here by clicking on these, right clicking, changing your number values and hitting key selected. Um, but you can if you need to adjust it. If it's too fast, is that looking the right direction? That kind of stuff. So let's go and let's see <clears throat> what it looks like. And that one is, I believe he's camera two. No, not camera two. Then, oh, wait, I gotta follow the names, right? This is why you organize it. He's at the top. Look at that. I'm more organized than I thought. Embarrassed. All right, there we go. So we go over here, and you can see now we are flying through, and it's a little bit fast. And I'm just dragging through it. So if we hit play, you might throw up. Well, actually, not too bad, except when he hits the corners. Ah! It's like a fly with head trauma. You'll see it follow the path all the way down. Now, anytime you want to stretch those out, again, all you need to do is stretch out your keyframes. But the curve itself, you can edit it after the fact, which is kind of nice. Let's go back to regular perspective. And uh, 
So if we have real harsh corners, we can go in here. You can even scale that out a little bit. Look at that, thin that out just a tad. Camera will still be connected. We'll look through the camera track. Got a one. And now hit play. And I just did really quick, I scaled it up. Turns are still a little sharp. But again, nothing you can't hammer out or fix. We just climbed up the side of that building because we're like a superhero. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. So that's one camera you can play with. And again, I'm not going to counter animate any of that other stuff in there since it's going to take way too long. <coughs> Excuse me. So the next one we want to do is we're going to take a look at a uh, camera with aim. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate this orb of death. And he's going to try to destroy the city because that's what orbs of death do. Orbs of death. Just made a song about it. My wife likes my weird songs. You guys may not like them, but I don't care. So we're going to let me snap him into place. And I'm going to snap him. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to try to snap him. See if we can put him on the tip of the camera. There we go. Right on the tip of the camera. And I'm going to move him out just a little bit. And he's going to be hovering over the city. And we're going to get our camera aim, and that's this control here. And what the camera aim does, it allows you to, exactly what it says, it allows you to aim. You can aim any direction. We're going to pull it a little bit closer so it's right on that orb. You can even put it on the inside of it if you want to. And we're going to animate him first, and then from there we're going to parent the group to him and then counter animate this guy. So let's. I'm going to animate him first. And you don't have to do it in this order. If you want to, you could parent the group ahead of time. But I'm just going to do it first, just for the heck of it. Um, so let's go in here. Let's go to the first key. I'll have the S key. I'm going to go all the way to, like, I don't know, 150. Float it. That's the noise it makes. It's the most annoying invading space force ever. It's like a grandma yodeling. Hit the S key again, so we got it like maybe hitting off to the side, and then maybe over here I'll have it go over here and go up so it doesn't phase through every building, and then go back over here, hit the S key, so that kind of goes at an arc, and then from there he'll end it by going forward because he's found the White House, and now he's going to blow it up because he's a jerk space jerks. Alright. So we got that there. Alright, so <laughs> that's a noise he makes. You guys should hear me later night when I'm animating. I make the same noises. Whatever. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we got this here. I'm going to hit the up key, just the uh, up arrow. Grabs the full group, and I'm going to shift grab the orb and hit P. So we, hard, we just hard parented it. So now when it animates, it takes this guy with him. But this is pretty boring. So what we're going to do is now going to counter animate with this dude. <clears throat> so I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to keyframe him here. Notice he's still going along because we're in charge of the group. But now we can have a little bit of fun. Right at two seconds, I'm going to move this up so it's more cinematic. Da -da -da. Orb of death and stuff. All right. So we go up to 170. Raise it up. You guys are catching me on a goofier mood. One thing is cameras sometimes can be a little boring, but also my head hurts and I'm trying to get my mind off of it. It goes up, it's up here. If we want, we can make it a little bit higher. We're gonna probably have to shift that aim though. And we don't have to set keyframes for it, we can just reposition it. Um, if you want to, you can, though. The option is there to reposition, um, keyframe that aim. Move that back up. S. And finally, move that completely up. S. So we got it, like, tracking the orb and going higher and higher, a little more dramatic. Let's go back to key keyframe one. I'm going to on, click on X-ray. It's up here at the top, little box. Um, I'm going to go grab that aim. You can also go in the outliner and grab it if you want to. Where is he? Where is that little fella? Oh, there he is. Come here, little fella. 
and I'm going to move it up a little bit. Actually, kind of centered more. There we go. That should work pretty good. All right. So let's look through his camera, and we'll call him Drama Cam. And let's look through panels, perspective, Drama Cam. Turn off X ray. Let's change his color to look like he's from another planet. We're going to right click, assign new material. We get something ungodly, like ungodly green. No man should wear this, not even at a Christmas party. So we're going to see what this looks like. And we'll hit play. Dun, 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 the Christmas ornament's gonna destroy the earth. There he goes. He's almost like a gumball. I just want to eat him. He just seems so nice. There you go. So you can see we just counter animated a little bit by raising the camera up. Get a little more dramatic with that last shot. So we can just keep going if you want to. And the cool thing about this, we can keep shuffling. Ignore my Steam stuff here. We can keep shuffling the camera around if we want to. And we can make it spin all the way around the object if we need to. It's pretty cool. Pretty sweet. <clears throat> okay, okay. Cool. So, now we're going to do some more stuff here. So let me go ahead and switch back to perspective. So another camera we have, and I want you to create for our homework assignment, those that are in my class, I want you to create um, another camera following another object using the one with the aim, the vector, the up vector here. And I want you to play with it a little bit and have some fun. Basically, you'd be animating like this guy, but then you would actually get, and you would also animate your control here. But don't forget to grab the group. Don't grab this guy and then think he's all parented when he's not. And you got to be careful because sometimes when you parent a camera, you don't have the group, you can destroy the camera. It will no longer do what it used to do. It may even act really weird. So be careful of that. So you would actually, again, this uh, third part would be making this guy the same kind of a uh, same kind of system that we meet here, but you would use this camera this time. You can make an orb, a cube, I don't care, but track it using this guy. And then I want you to set in some extra keys to make it interesting. All right, so one more thing we're going to do is a turntable. We're actually going to uh, rotate around an object. So um, we'll just pick on maybe one of my modified buildings here. I think this is one I modified, I can't remember. So say we think it's awesome. Say we want to put on a new shader, because that shader looks like carpet. We'll do blend. It's really awesome. What's up, blend? And uh, we want to rotate around this object. We think he's great. We think he's going to work just fine. What you would do, let's move out into space here. This just prevents me from opening up another scene. What we're going to do is we have him here. You can select that object and under animate, we're going to create a turntable. Now the only problem with using the turntable, what it is, it's going to, the camera is going to be on a like a group turntable, go around the object, is the object and where the camera direction's at, you have to make sure your light's consistent. Because if your light's not consistent, it can show up. So let me show you how that works. So we have it at zero, number of frames, we're going to do 300. You may even want to make your uh, your frames larger than your timeline down below because what happens what Maya does when you set keys and it's got auto set keys here it's gonna have a beginning and it's gonna have a start and it's gonna start to taper down on its motion and it'll look really weird if you didn't intend that so if you do have it make sure that you make your timeline shorter than the end of your uh, turntable and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second so we say create turntable so it automatically makes a turntable camera the like, turntable camera is locked onto this object so when we hit play now, you'll see the object's spinning around and the camera's moving around too. Now, actually the, the object's not moving, the camera's moving, sorry about that. But when it does that, you'll notice the light, this is what I meant by the light being inconsistent. So if you do use this, you have to make sure there's equal light all around your object because your camera is going to end up getting the darker side of your object and you might lose some detail. So notice it starts to taper off on the motion here at the back end. So if you don't want that to happen and look weird because you know maybe you, you want to revolve around it a couple times or you don't want it to slow down so you can go to the next shot, 
what do you do is you go in here and you can lower your timeline playback and then hit play and you'll notice that it doesn't slow down there you go not as much it does chop a little bit but this allows you to go to the next shot in your video because it's for eventual video output all right so that's making a turntable it's that easy all right so that's my video on this hopefully you guys enjoy this this allows you to check things out i did go over turntable in another video about uh, making your models uh, look professional um all right so that's about it